Hi, uh, good afternoon. Thank you. No, and good afternoon to everyone. I, again, I'm Hilda of Activo Cafe Cafe Project, and with me today are my partner, are our partners and colleagues, and at the same time our co-presenters. So we have here um, our market systems actors coordinator, Mani Kizol. Mani, please own your cap. <laughs> and, and also we have here Melissa Alado, our access to finance and investment office uh, specialist. And our producer organizations, our partners, we have here Ms. Marivic Dobria of Bakofa, Balutakai Coffee Farmers Association in Mount Apo. And we have here Shaina de Guzman of Magsigi Co-op in Davao City. And uh, Shine, are you here? And of course we have here uh, Dato Rio Besto of uh, Mila Litra Cooperative in Talakag in Mount Kitanglad. My next slide, please. And so today we will share Fel Cafe experience on market systems approach to coffee value chain development. So you will hear how Fel Cafe project build the capacity and expand businesses and services of our coffee value chain actors. But first I'd like to introduce Activoca. It's actually Activoca. But no, no acronym for that. And this is, it's an international NGO and a global development and delivery partner based in Washington, DC. And Activoca has already implemented uh, effective and economic social development projects around the world, about 63 countries. And it's been here in the Philippines for almost 30 years and implemented several agricultural projects such as cacao, coconut, rice, and coffee. Next slide, please, man. So to implement the Phil Cafe project, we coordinate with CHED to establish coffee curricula across state universities and colleges and private universities. So we build their competencies and business skills of the students and also the, the, the research and uh, extension services uh, department of the universities and to build, this, build their capacity in modern business and, and the coffee value chain from farming and processing to trading, roasting and so on, including barista skills. So to know more about Fel Cafe Project, please watch this short video. Thank you. Despite the significant progress in recent years, the Philippine coffee sector remains in need of support to realize its full potential and deliver improved livelihood opportunities to farmers throughout the country. The Philippine Coffee Advancement and Farm Enterprise, or Phil Cafe Project, aspires to fulfill this potential. It aims to increase production of conventional and specialty coffee, boost the country's coffee experts, and build the capacity and expand service provision of the coffee value chain. Funded by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the Phil Cafe Project is being implemented by ACDI VOCA an international organization that fosters broad-based economic growth by promoting economic opportunities for cooperatives, enterprises, and communities worldwide. Phil Cafe Project also collaborates with key government partners, such as the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Trade and Industry, and the Department of Agrarian Reform, among others in project implementation and interventions to leverage and maximize program impact. The project promotes gender equity and social inclusion among staff and in the communities where it works. Phil Cafe supports gender-sensitive strategies, policies, and training that contribute to equitable outcomes among partner businesses, producer organizations, and target communities. 
Specifically, Phil Cafe Project targets to strengthen the capacities of at least 13,700 coffee farmers in the Philippines, expand services support to 350 coffee value chain players, increase by 50% the country's coffee production, and increase coffee exports tenfold. To achieve program targets and objectives, Phil Cafe Project intends to improve the public-private coordination to promote the Philippine coffee industry. Phil Cafe facilitates the expansion of extension services to increase adoption of good agricultural practices and improve on-farm technologies in coffee production. The project supports the establishment of nurseries that produce high-quality seedlings and will strengthen producer access to retail input agents while increasing the capacity of producer organizations as a critical link in the coffee value chain. In addition to these strategies, the Phil Cafe project also works to improve post-harvest handling and processing to maintain quality characteristics as it facilitates agricultural lending to close the financing gap across the value chain. Leverage public and private investments to scale and sustain results and highlight the diversity of Filipino coffee origins to facilitate linkages with specialty and conventional coffee buyers. Philippine coffee has great potential in the international market. The Phil Cafe project is working with coffee cooperatives and coffee producing communities in Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao to promote international coffee standards through the adoption of good agricultural practices in coffee production, ensure proper harvesting and post-harvest handling and processing. The Phil Cafe project works in partnership with World Coffee Research in the implementation of the Global Coffee Monitoring Program, specifically on-farm technology trials and international multi-location variety trials to ensure the availability of high-quality planting materials in the coming decades. The project also works with longtime partner with Coffee Quality Institute, a non-profit organization working to improve the quality of coffee and the lives of people who produce coffee around the world. Phil Cafe has established its main office in Davao City with field offices in the provinces of Bukidnon, Cavite, Sultan Kudarat, and Mountain Province that provide assistance to farmers and producer organizations located in these coffee producing areas. The Phil Cafe project seeks to empower legacy institutions to promote sector governance such as the regional coffee councils, state universities and colleges, private universities, and private sector stakeholders to sustain coffee industry development. Overall, the project is an important investment in the coffee sector that will leverage private and public capital to support the inclusive growth of the Philippine coffee sector. The Phil Cafe Project, expanding opportunities for the Philippine coffee sector from farmers to consumers. Please proceed, man. Okay, so by the way, I was introduced earlier. My name is Manny and I am the Market Systems Development Coordinator of AC Devoca. So as mentioned, this afternoon, we will be joined by our farmers from Bukidnon. We also have farmer representative from Davao del Sur and from Davao City. So um, I was tasked to discuss about AC Devoca's approach in promoting inclusive development, you know, especially uh, in the coffee sector. So I will be presenting a few slides, but again, this afternoon, we would like to put the spotlight on our farmers. So uh, uh, later on, after my presentation, I will be uh, introducing our farmer representative who in turn will uh, also discuss about the different business models and We'll share with uh, everyone the 
um, their secret, <laughs> their approach, no? so uh, what has made the, them become uh, the coffee champions or what has made them become um, uh, the successful organization they are today. So um, can you see my screen? I think I have my share, uh, my screen shared already. Yes, sir. So, uh, mm -hmm. Since I'm also monitoring in our Facebook live, live now. So, so this is our approach to uh, coffee development, uh, uh, industry development. Okay. So I'll be AC Day. Uh, Hilda already introduced uh, AC Day Voca and the Feel Coffee project. Now, so again, uh, <laughs> uh, Hilda mentioned everywhere. Uh, earlier that, uh, yeah, we're no longer using the acronym. It used to be the old name of AC Daivoca, but right now uh, we're just using uh, AC Daivoca. Okay, so the name of our project is Phil Cafe Project, or which stands for the Philippine Coffee Farm, Philippine Coffee Advancement and Farm Enterprise Project. And this is funded by uh, the United States Department of Agriculture. So. What is our approach now with the Field Cafe project uh, as we intend to develop the coffee industry in the Philippines? So what you will see in your screen right now um, is uh, a picture that illustrates uh, how uh, ACDA Boca is using the market systems approach uh, to develop the coffee industry. Okay, so basically uh, in the implementation of the Field Cafe project, uh, we are looking at ourselves as the market facilitator, the market development facilitator. So technically, uh, AC Daivoca does not intend to compete uh, in delivering services to the coffee sector with the existing service providers that are already uh, in place. And uh, for that reason, uh, AC Daivoca works with the different uh, state universities, uh, universities and colleges. So we have uh, in Luzon, our office located uh, inside the Cavite State University. We are also working with Mountain Province State Polytechnic College and uh, Central Mindanao University, Sultan Kudarat State University, and uh, also Dawad al -Sur State College, Kalinga State University, and uh, other academic partners. So, the reason being is that we know that um, like the Xavier University, for example, or the Ateneo de Cagayan uh, also have its uh, extension office that uh, provides uh, important services uh, to the farming sector. So that's how we do it uh, as much as possible. We don't want to uh, get into the direct delivery of services, but we're doing that uh, through our uh, project partners. So. In the implementation of the Field Cafe project, we have eight major activities. So our activity one includes uh, developing the capacity uh, of our uh, farmer organizations, especially at the national level, such as the Philippine Coffee Council or the Philippine uh, Coffee Guild. So we are working with these organizations and of course our national government agencies such as the DA and the DTI uh, in terms of the governance and uh, of course the educational institutions. No? So building the capacity uh, of this to become the go-to organizations or to deliver uh, specific activities, services, and policies uh, to develop the coffee industry. And uh, for our activity to uh, this in uh, involves, of course, uh, the production training. We're in, uh, we are working with, uh, I think around 45 farmer producer organization all over the country. So Field Cafe Projects is implemented nationwide. So we, through our assessment and um, uh, identification or uh, elimination process, since there were several applicants, uh, we identified uh, potential organizations that uh, can potentially uh, cascade our activities to uh, the different uh, farmers nationwide. So uh, that includes uh, training on improved agricultural production practices. And uh, for our uh, activity three, which is more on 
improving access to inputs. So we work with different uh, companies, especially uh, uh, fertilizer and chemical companies, uh, input suppliers, and uh, of course the government, particularly the pest, uh, fertilizer and pesticide authority so that uh, uh, availability of important inputs, especially uh, fertilizers and pesticides, organic um, or inorganic, and then of course uh, other inputs, especially uh, quality planting materials are also addressed. And uh, for our activity four, uh, that's all about uh, developing the capacity of producer organizations so that they in turn uh, can develop or uh, deliver effective, efficient services to their uh, farmer organizations. So we have that activity. And uh, uh, for that, we are working with different organizations such as NATCO, AgriCo, PH, and uh, other organizations uh, that can also cascade and deliver services, no? especially capacity and capability building support for the producer organizations. And uh, we also have activities uh, related to uh, developing access to uh, important financial services. So we work with different uh, financial uh, organizations. We work with Land Bank, Development Bank of the Philippines, Rizal Microbank, and even uh, cooperatives that have or who are engaged in agricultural lending. Because, uh, uh, what is happening right now, especially in uh, the financial services sector, most of the financial services which are available in the market uh, does not necessarily cater to the needs of the agriculture sector. So we are very, very intentional on that so that our farmers uh, would really have better and uh, fair access to, the, to agricultural uh, services. We also have activities related to uh, investments, so uh, especially leveraging private and private uh, public investments. So we do work with several organizations. We do have grant programs that uh, certain players can also avail. And uh, we have activities related also, of course, this is very important because uh, we uh, especially uh, in the coffee sector of the Philippines, uh, we are not really popular in terms of the volume of production. Uh, it's very hard for us to see the name Philippines in the world coffee map, mainly because, well, back in the uh, 70s, we used to be one of the largest uh, producer uh, of coffee in the world. But right now, uh, we are... I think the fourth largest consumer. However, 93% of our consumption is imported. So at, we only grow 7%. So it's very important that uh, we have uh, this uh, uh, positioning as in terms of how do we intend to be known. So we cannot be known in terms of volume. So the best strategy really is to position the Philippines to become the source of quality coffee and by quality coffee, meaning specialty robusta, uh, specialty arabica and fine robusta coffee. So we we're making good uh, improvement in that aspect, <coughs> especially that uh, people like later on Marvik, uh, Milalitra are already you know gaining uh, popularity in terms of the quality of their coffee. And uh, we also have activities related to uh, improving market access. So like uh, for the past, uh, I think three or four years already, we've already joining uh, and staging the Philippine Coffee in the Global Specialty Coffee Expo. And the Philippine Coffee now is being uh, exported uh, in countries like the US. We have uh, exports in Japan, Canada, Korea, and uh, some uh, areas in, in Europe. So basically those are the activities uh, which falls under the implementation of the Field Cafe project. So in terms of our approach, uh, well, 
ACDA Evoca has been known uh, for its, you know, value chain approach to develop several industries in the past. We work in cacao, we work in the coconut, and right now we're working in the coffee sector. So yeah, we're very known in terms of value chain development approach. But for this project, we are following the market systems development approach. So you might wonder if, uh, so is this a replacement of uh, the value chain development approach? No. So again, uh, the market system development approach is just enhancing what is already there, which is the value chain. And I'm going to uh, explain that in a few slides, but again, looking at this uh, graphical illustration that you see in your screen right now, basically uh, the, the, <coughs> the market system development approach uh, looks at uh, the important factors that affects the market system dynamics. So of course, we're looking at the resources, we look at the rules, we look at the relationships, and we look at the norms. You know? So these are the things or the factors that affects the efficiency uh, in the market systems dynamic. Now. While of course, uh, in, within the market system are several value chain. Again, uh, in the value chain, we look at the different factors that affects the value chain competitiveness. We know we look at the enabling environment, we look at the policy environment, uh, we look at the support markets, we look at the uh, firm level upgrading, uh, we look at uh, the upgrading needs. Uh, so there are a lot of factors, uh, five of them actually, that we're looking. So again, uh, within the, the uh, market system are uh, different value chains. So uh, market system, uh, uh, by definition, uh, it's uh, an approach that embraces the complexities and uh, the complex relationships of, and interrelationship of different value chain. So because especially uh, we are an archipelago who uh, much as we wanted to become very, very efficient, but our efficiency is also affected by other systems like of course the transportation system. So uh, that's how uh, market system development is. Uh, it, look, it looks at other uh, systems like the economic, the social and political, and the underlying norms, networks, and patterns that change the behavior and social out outcomes. So like case in point, for example, like we have the COVID uh, pandemic right now. So we cannot help, of course, but look at the health system uh, in the country because uh, the, it's already uh, affecting the industry right now. Like uh, a lot of shops are already closing. We're doing the Philippine Coffee Quality Competition, but there are activities especially related to quality improvement that we cannot do because of the health and safety protocols. So in the market system, we are taking all this into factor. And of course, uh, aside from the value chain, we look at the interconnected systems, we look at the governance structures. We look at a very specific at communities and household. You know? So the system changes that we're looking at is we wanted an industry to become resilient, an industry to become inclusive, and an industry to become competitive. So again, market system is complex. It is comprised of multiple value chain. It, of course, uh, there are several actors involved and of course, there are dynamics, no, uh, especially those that affects the household at, at the community levels. So again, uh, it is a dynamic space. We look at, uh, as mentioned earlier, the rule, roles, the relationship, the resources, the rules and results. No? So of course, uh, within which the private and uh, public actors collaborate coordinate and compete for production, distribution, and consumption of goods. So uh, uh, it, I'd like to uh, also uh, put more emphasis in uh, working with different players that competes. So like, for example, in the input supply, we're not only working with one uh, input supply companies and even 
with the coffee buyers and traders. So as much as possible, we work with everyone, even with competing businesses, so that we level the playing field. And uh, of course, the more services uh, can potentially reach our farmer uh, organizations. <coughs> so we look at, of course, uh, in the market system, the vertical and horizontal linkages of the firms. We look at the relationships and uh, uh, that are embedded in, the, in those linkages. We look at the end market. It's very important. Again, uh, here the principle is everything should start in the market and end in the market because no matter how productive your coffee is, no matter how best the quality is without the market, then all your efforts on the ground uh, will be in vain. And of course, we look at the input and support services of the market and then the environment with which it operates. So, so uh, we are also looking uh, in the market system, uh, the, the actors or the sector which are like uh, underrepresented or underprivileged. That includes, of course, the women, the youth, the ethnic minorities and other marginalized groups, which are traditionally exploited by, you know, the usual market system. <coughs> so with the market systems approach, we aim to facilitate the market system to become competitive, meaning uh, it grows and responds to domestic and uh, export market opportunities. We are looking uh, to be able to have a market system that is inclusive, meaning of course, it enables marginalized sector. Uh, it benefits everyone. There is a good flow of information, uh, a good spread uh, or equal spread of incomes, the services and inputs, and eventually empowering everyone within the, inside the sector. <coughs> and also, we aim to have a, a market that is resilient, uh, especially, you know, the, the shocks uh, that is being brought about the movement in the market you know, so that the market actors uh, can withstand, adapt, and transform in response to uh, the ever-changing uh, dynamics, especially in the movement of price, the demand, the climate, and right now, the pandemic. So the market system is beneficial because uh, here, you can have a good scale and impact, meaning uh, you're targeting uh, leverage points and you're building local ownership. So that means we're able to uh, reach more people and have more impact. It is sustainable because uh, if and when the implementation of the system is effective, then we're expecting that there is a change in market system dynamic and that will stick better and be able to sustain by those uh, partners that uh, we're working with, especially those who are already uh, our internal player within the market system. Well, in this approach, there's a good value for money uh, since uh, we're looking at improved leverage and adaptive management, now which we can do. We can do more with less, especially if the actors. Uh, in the firm uh, can have a better appreciation that they need also to provide the needed services so that that uh, sector becomes competitive. And of course, it is evidence-based since our approach is uh, driven by causal lo logic models, continual monitoring and learning, and then it provides the decision makers, the managers, a sound and evidence-based for making program uh, decisions. So that's... Uh, who we are as a project, what we're doing uh, to develop uh, the coffee industry uh, in the Philippines in a nutshell. And uh, at this juncture, so that you'll get to know how uh, or how things are going on in the field, what are the impacts that uh, it's uh, creating. So I'm going to introduce to you our Farmer resource person, uh, they call her the coffee queen. She's been traveling all over the world because of coffee. She's been recognized uh, 
as like for few times already the winner of the Philippine coffee quality competition so again let's give a round of applause to Miss Marvik Dobria of the famous Balutakai Coffee Farmers Association to share their experience. Take Hello, it away, good Vic. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Okay. Please. Okay. Good afternoon, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Um... Okay, I would like to present to you our cooperative. Um, ang Balutakay Coffee Farmers Association was um, organized last uh, May 26, 2013. Um, we are organized by the, the Kapo Applement Foundation. Okay, we have our, our vision. An empowered farming community of a world you know Philippine specialty coffee. Yes, next slide, please. Uh, Bakofa is an apassionate community of specialty coffee producers committed to produce world you know, renewed quality coffee products from the um, application of sustainable agribusiness practices, continued learning and knowledge sharing, collaboration, with various coffee industry stakeholders. Next slide, Steve. And we have our production um, to act as the center of excellence and specialty coffee production and post-harvest technology in the community. And in our marketing, we have to operate a centralized coffee processing facility and marketing good quality specialty coffee beans. In our management, we have to provide continuous learning among management and staff and professional cooperative business management. And in sustainability, we have to reward our active members with good financial returns by putting into practice the, co the cooperative principles. Next slide, please. And with the co collaboration with the different the, uh, stakeholders like the A, DTI, and NGOs, and academic LGUs, uh, roasters, and coffee shops, baristas, exports. Um, yun ang naging dahilan kung bakit si, si Bakofa ngayon ay naging isang successful na um, a business entrepreneur as in our cooperative. So may maraming training na pinagdaanan si Bakofa noon like strategic, strategic business planning, through the help of the NGOs like uh, CDI Boca, uh, we trained and we trained and we attend some farmers' trainings and then learning and visit. We we undergone a lot of trainings and then uh, we we have we experience going to the other farmers just to experience. Um, para ma experience namin kung ano yung ginagawa nila. So the, we exchange like uh, papunta doon sa kanilang mga farm and then observe and then mayroon din kaming mga demo farms and then we train uh, may mga farmer leaders kaming pinitrain and then uh, through the Phil Coffee project and during the Menpak project we experienced as a few breeders so yung magtikim-tikim ng kape Para, kasi noon, ang experience kasi ni Bakofa noon is parang uh, hindi namin alam kung ano talaga yung tamang quality or yung kalidad ng isang kape. Kasi um, before kasi yung Bakofa is nakarelay lang on, sa old traditional way of uh, uh, processing our coffee. So, binibilad lang namin sa tarp. Tapos, uh, uh, hindi pa namin alam yung sorting, yung yung paano i-store ng proper yung kape namin at saka hindi pa namin ma-identify kung ano talaga yung tamang quality ng kape. So through the help of uh, Menpak Project and the Phil Cafe Project this time, um, kaya naging, ano kami, naging very conservative in terms of uh, the quality. So we experienced coffee cupping and then now we have... Um, 30 buyers that we accommodate entire Philippines and then we have market in Japan and in 
Dubai, and US, and Canada. At saka, and then we, we also um, experiencing the, the real processing of coffee. Sir. Hello, Sir Manny. Hello. Yes, nakikita mo ang slide natin, no? So, uh, yes, maybe, uh, yeah, Vic, uh, uh, you can also talk uh, about uh, your business right now and maybe the accolades kasi we know that you're very humble but <laughs> you've received several awards already and I think it's also worth sharing then sa audience natin how does the access to finance uh, also uh, help your business since uh, you are now a model in terms of agri-financing from before, uh, for the information of our viewers, uh, si Marvik and the farmers in their area, they're very, very afraid na mangutang. No? They're afraid of the bank and they don't know how to process. So maybe <laughs> Marvik also can uh, share to us the experience in terms of, you know, having the benefit of uh, getting assisted by the Field Cafe Project, our access to finance team. And in, in return, yeah. how did that impact your business? Um, during the uh, ng dahil sa Phil Coffee project or the Menpak project before, uh, they link us to the different bank bank, but we are afraid to <laughs> to get some loans from the bank because we are afraid that, that we put in jail if we cannot pay the the loan. And then, uh, but the the bank is very very friendly, like the microbank sila talaga yung nagpunta doon sa mga farmers then nag-explain kung paano yung pag pag ano pag pag pag, pag, an, pag process ng loan namin tapos pagkatapos noon di nagsabi sila sa amin na kailangan naming mag magtry so uh, as a leader as uh, sa management namin yung iba din kasamahan ko so tatlo kami muna yung nag-start ng mag-loan doon sa ano as as a farmer po, as an individual na loan. And then hanggang sa nagka-problema kami kasi marami na yung production ng kape tapos kulang yung capital ni Bakofa. So ayan, nag, na, we are trying our best nga, kay, nga umutang doon sa banko. So nag-grant naman through the help ng ng Phil Cafe kasi parang ina-assist kami for the papers kasi hindi namin alam kung paano yun namin ipro-process yung loan. So through the help nila, uh, ayun, nag-grant yung, yung three, start kami ng 300,000 until naging 700,000 until 1 million. And then, uh, ayun, hindi na kami natatakot mag-loan sa, sa banko at hanggang ngayon kasi yung bank na kasi yung humahabol-habol sa amin kung uh, para mag-loan. Kasi nakikita namin din yung, yung malaking market ng, ng kape so kailangan talaga namin yung malaking capital. So, Sa ngayon, at the present, na mayroon kaming loan doon sa land bank, yung 10 million po. Kasi yung 3.5 million is for production and then yung 6.5 million is for the loan para makapag-fertilize at saka makap-maintain yung mga farmers namin for their coffee farms. And then kahapon, nag-sign naman kami ng, ng 10 million from the microbank, from the Rizal microbank for the preparation for the next harvest season para hindi na kami magkakandara pa uh, para sa capital namin for coffee. Yes, sir, Manny. Thank <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Vic. No? So again, uh, aside from the loan that the cooperative uh, uh, was able to access to the banks, um, yung individual members din nila ni Bakofa, um, they used to be afraid uh, in borrowing money from the bank. No? But uh, we were able to uh, help them. Uh, we're, we're able to uh, parang allow them to cross that bridge no? from being too afraid of the financial <laughs> institutions. No? So uh, they were able to start borrowing money from Rizal Microbank uh, to the tune of 25,000. And what was funny was that even before magju yung utang nila, they wanted to settle that with the bank. No? So uh, eventually, no, nasana din sila. And right now, uh, madali na lang kay Rizal Microbank to allow them to borrow money from Rizal Microbank. So 
from 25,000 pesos dati Vic, how much na ngayon yung individual farmer mo? Uh, from 25,000, nag, nagpunta kami sa 50,000 hanggang sa 100,000. And then hanggang sa hindi na ma, ma, ano yung kwan kasi nakapagbayad na for coffee processing. So hanggang umaabot na kami ngayon sa 150,000 yung farmers na individual na makapag-loan dun sa Rizal Microbanko. Yeah, so that's for the individual <laughs> loan. So that yes. means, uh, that being said, really... Uh, With uh, the what Bakofa is doing right now, we can say that there is money in coffee. May pera ba yes. sa coffee, Vic? Vic? Kasi we have farmers here, eh. may nagtatanong <laughs> na paano makakasali sa inyo. So maybe, uh, how, how can we make more money in coffee, Vic? Maybe pwede natin yan siya, iano, no? uh, how were you able to sustain your operation? How were yes, you able sir. to expand your number of members? No? And how coffee played a role in that? Uh, As of now, sir, uh, before we are just neglecting the coffee, uh, parang parang nagjan lang yon sa tabi. Pero ngayon we we considered coffee as a black gold. <laughs> kasi parang ang ang laki na kasi pinagiba ng mga farmers dito. At saka malaki ding tulong ito sa sa amin as a farmer. Pero kailangan din nating mag undergo ng different trainings and and seminars para para ma-attend natin yung yung tamang quality ng kape kasi doon talaga ang ang ano ang key para para mabinta natin siya sa mahal na presyo kasi during during the time na hindi hindi pa hindi pa namin alam yung tamang quality talaga ng kape hindi namin maibibinta ng mahal so for me para sa akin talaga for example yung yung kape ko binili ni ni Ota ng, ng, ng 800 pesos per kilo so malaking tolong na yon kasi parang ikakap muna nila so as as a farmer kailangan nating um, magporsigi at saka um, sinasabi nila na walang pera sa kape pero ang sa amin in our experience may pera talaga sa kape thank you Vic no so that's from I think 100 pesos per kilo dati no ang buying yes, sa inyo? Um, from 80 p- uh, 70 to 80 pesos sir hanggang naging 135 pesos yung bili ng Monks Blend. Tapos hanggang sa 108, 150, 180 hanggang sa dumating kayo at nakita nyo yung malaking volume namin tapos wala namang quality. So hanggang na-train at saka ano na talaga. May, <laughs> may quality na. Okay, thank you Vic. So, let's finish your ano, presentation kasi we just wanted to show everyone yung parang photos kasi uh, especially yung mga awards ninyo. Uh, i-share yes. ko muna yung... <laughs> Nakashare na bang screen ko? Yes, sir. So, <laughs> because so, of coffee. <laughs> okay, because of coffee, uh, nakapunta ako sa Washington D.C. sa U.S. Nung, nung nanalo ako bilang uh, second place during the Philippine Coffee Conference in Baguio. So, um, hindi ko yun kape. I just like to process it para iprove ko sa mga farmers na talagang hindi hindi lang sa akin yung masarap na kape kundi masarap din sa kanila. Until I process my own coffee para maging... Kasi nung in-announce kasi doon sa Washington na ang next competition is doon sa Boston. So gusto ko talaga pumunta sa Boston. So nag-process ako ng sarili kong kape para makapunta talaga ako sa Boston. Last 2019 po yun. So naging first place po. <laughs> At saka naging so, awardee din ako. Boston, USA yun, Vic. Hindi yes, Boston, the Oriental. <laughs> Boston, <laughs> USA po. <laughs> Yeah, At saka hanggang yeah. naging awardee ako sa ano sa sa probinsya namin bilang uh, coffee industry ano <laughs> awardee. Saka may maraming mga trainings. Next slide please. Okay, next sir. Okay, ito yung picture na may ano naka-yellow t-shirt ako. Uh, yan ang first naming nag-export doon sa USA. So at at the price of 300 pesos per kilo. And then we have several trainings here. Nandiyan pa si Sir Kilonius. And then this picture was taken tong naka-Pilipinian ako 
Doon sa Washington, USA. Seattle, Washington, USA po. Ah, uh, ito naman yung training namin sa marketing and then doon kami nagpunta sa Frog Cafe. Yan. So there's a lot of trainings na na-experience si Bakofa bago siya naging successful po. So we visit some farms and yeah, there's a lot of trainings. <laughs> this one is a strategic planning <laughs> na may malaking tulong sa amin. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Vic. No, so later on, uh, we will get back to you uh, for our open forum. So we can proceed now with another partner we have, uh, the Magsige Cooperative, and this is based in Davao City. So Sheena, uh, nandyan ka man, Ms. Sheena, no? Hi, Sir Man. Good afternoon. So I'm going to share the screen as a guide to your presentation. Yes, sir, please. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, by the way, I am Shena de Guzman from Magsigi MPC. And uh, I would like to present to you our uh, business model, especially for this uh, coffee project. Okay, so firstly, I would like to uh, present to you our uh, business model as a whole. So Magsigi MPC or Manuel Gianga and City Growers uh, and Employees Multipurpose Cooperative uh, have this uh, business model on which uh, firstly, we have this uh, marketing. No? So under marketing, we have the consumer consumer store and the garments and uh, we have also in agriculture so we have the banana cacao and coffee and also the the biggest uh, business of the cooperative which is the uh, job contracting so under the job contracting we are into uh, agricultural industry which is the banana tuna and uh, coconut and we have also the uh, financing on which uh, under the financing we have loans, savings, uh, ATM, and insurance. So this is the business model of the cooperative as a whole and I would like to present to you our uh, business called model for uh, the coffee uh, agri -bus business. Actually, uh, we're just in the first two phase pa lang po, no? Because we just started the uh, coffee project way back in 2019 with, uh, in partnership with uh, Phil Cafe project of ACDI Boca. Okay, so this is our aim, no? So the same with uh, Bacofa. Uh, our aim is to produce uh, green coffee beans and, of course, uh, roasted coffee. And uh, since we are into uh, agricultural business, uh, we, we aim also to have this agri-input supply uh, in the future. Actually, right now, uh, uh, kinakandak pa po namin ang feasibility, feasibility study of this uh, agri-input supply store since we do have farms, we do have farmers in our cooperative. And of course, this coffee bean uh, trading. Okay, so... Uh, uh, in realization of the coffee demo farm and coffee nursery, uh, we have this uh, partners, no, which is uh, the uh, different government uh, agencies, LGUs, and private companies, on which uh, we have the uh, City Agri, uh, CDA, DCWD, uh, DTI, and of course, DA. And of course, uh, since we are aiming to uh, put into an uh, agri-input supply, uh, we are now uh, processing our partnership with the FPA. And of course, uh, since we have the this uh, no, demo farm, so our partner for the uh, agri-input su supply for the demo farm is the Sagrex. So... Uh, this is our activities uh, that we have right now in the materialization of the project. No, so we have uh, 
we are uh, training our farmers on how to uh, plant coffee, no? Or we have this called uh, coffee st establishment uh, trainings that would be conducted uh, with our uh, coffee mentors and, of course, our uh, agri uh, agri technicians. So on that training, uh, they teach the farmers on how to grow coffee and what what are the uh, technical aspects that they have to uh, observe, no? Because uh, we're aiming, ano, eh, we're aiming a big production of coffee in the future. And since uh, actually coffee has been with uh, in our areas for how many years? However, uh, hindi po na follow yung uh, tamang technique on how to grow coffee. That's why uh, yung uh, yung produce natin is not not just like other coffee industries that are uh, really observing the right technique. So that's why uh, before we introduce to our coffee farmers the project, we really have to teach them on how to plant coffee and what are the te te techniques uh, and of course the technical aspects that they have to uh, that they have to undergo. Okay, so uh, during the uh, no, during during the training, uh, uh, they they teach also the farmer on how uh, on how the production goes no for the coffee. Let's say uh, uh, kung paano po siya, kung how it will uh, it will cost kung papa uh, kung uh, magkano po ang magastos nila uh, from um, from getting the seedlings down to planting and of course to fertilization and of course for the maintenance so yun po and uh, including the processing na rin po though kami po uh, we're not yet into this uh, processing but soon uh, kasi ang plano talaga namin is really to engage on the uh, uh, post harvesting and the processing of uh, coffee beans. Okay, so and of course in the realization of uh, the uh, coffee, uh, no, coffee growing with our uh, farmer members of the cooperative, we have these uh, partners. No, so in fact the cooperative has uh, nakakuha po kami ng worth uh, fifty million. No. Uh, from the annual program of uh, Department of Agriculture through LB through DBP, so yun po ang ginamit namin na uh, parang source of our financing for for the uh, coffee farmers para po uh, yun po ang magiging serve as a loan nila sa amin and uh, once they have their produce uh, two years later. Uh, that's the time that they have to uh, pay the amount for the loan na, na grant namin sa kanila in realization of the program. So uh, after that, uh, uh, after having the ano po siguro two years uh, later, kung may ano na po kung may uh, abot na po ang aming mga farmers, we will buy their uh, coffee bean. And then uh, right now, actually, in preparation for this uh, plan, the cooperative is looking for a kind of, uh, looking for a uh, land for our uh, post harvest facility. No, so para po sa aming aim to have this uh, green coffee, uh, green coffee bean, and of course this uh, roasted coffee beans so yun po and of course here are some uh, pictures of our uh, coffee nursery no so ito po uh, actually uh, last year we're we're on our first cycle no kasi nga we just uh, started it in 2019 the uh, the uh, the nursery establishment and uh, in early 2020 we we just started the uh, propagation of uh, coffee seedlings and here they are and of course uh, just last uh, September 2020 uh, naka-release na po kami ng uh, coffee and as of uh, March 
uh, we have released uh, 61,000 of uh, seedlings na po with our part partners and of course some of them are the uh, uh, private individuals who would like to go into coffee production also. And soon will be our partner for the coffee bean. And of course, we have also, as I have mentioned uh, kaganina, kanina po, that we have this demo farm uh, in partnership with the, uh, of course, ACDI Boca and of course, the our private uh, uh, agri-input supplier, which is a SAGREC. So we have this uh, demo farm. So ito na po yun, ito yung current na photos of our demo farm in Baganihan. And of course, since we see the potential or we saw the potential of the uh, coffee seedlings, and of course, because of the demand of uh, the other varieties of coffee, no, kasi uh, in, ano, in Baganihan, uh, ano lang po, uh, Arabica coffee po yung naka, ano, doon, naka propagate doon. So, so since we see the potential or we saw the potential of the Robusta coffee, so we expanded our nursery in Barangay Manuel Gianga on which uh, ang ano po namin dyan is uh, Robusta which is uh, yun po ang demand ngayon kasi we have these areas uh, located in midland, lowland na kailangan po nila ng uh, coffee seedlings which is ang, suita ang suitable po for, the, for that land area is the Robusta variety. So, yun po. Thank you. Yan. Thank you, Miss Anna, Miss Shaina. No? So, that's a very good sharing, especially uh, dun sa ano, uh, uh, for, for organizations who wanted to venture into coffee production kasi si ano si Magsige is uh, bago siya no unlike Bakofa na ano so si uh, si Magsige is uh, uh, an organization that is uh, new into the coffee business okay so uh, nandito pa ba si Joanna i'm not sure if uh, Milalitra is here but again since nan, uh, nasa program naman natin sila and uh, since uh, this month is ano uh, it's a women's month no and maybe we can share a little bit kasi um, uh, Ateneo naman is located uh, in uh, near Bukidnon area. So we find it uh, fitting to share na lang kasi uh, I've heard na nawalan ng signal si farmer. No? So instead of having them talk, we'd like to share to you, uh, to share with everyone uh, the video uh, in celebration of the women's man no for to our ano a salute to our mga ano natin women na agri entrepreneurs so uh, please uh, watch this video ako si Joanna ako ang acting manager sa Melfaco niya nagsugod ang among grupo as an association way back 1997 pero formally na registered sa SEC 2003 Ka 2019 na register mi as Milpa ko Milalitra regatin siya Milalitra Farmers Agriculture Co-op niya na siya members na 24 ka buo Unya, uh, pagkapila ka months ato na nag-increase me into 60 by yung tanan member belong dito sa talaan di try. So, na, kita na mo nga ang kapi, usagi siya ka kining project na dili makadaot sa kanya iyahan o makatabang sa mga tao. Kay, among nakitaan po nga, ang mga lumad ganun ay nagprotekta sa kanya iyahan pero kinahanglas ay maprotektahan ang iyang pamilya. So, pagprotekta sa iyang pamilya, kinahanglas siya sa itong inka. So, muna ang nakita na mag-coop ni kay para ang among presyo sa kapi, medyo siya mo taas. Eh, kung ma-insure na mo ang quality, mabaligya na mo mataas, si farmer, taas po ang presyo na ang mahatag sa iyo. 
So, naluyan po niya. Naka-access ni Uglo. Na, 500,000 ang start-up. Pero, kulang kaayog siya. Ay, dapo, di ay kaayogit ang among gulyo. Nang nalipay niya nga, nakita lugar niya sa isa ka beneficiary sa mga project sa ACDI po ka. So, natudluan niya nila sa sakto ng technology. Sa pagsugod na sa kape, nakapataod sila ko oriente na yung kapalit o mga tabayo. So, sa amo yung pagkuan kay nakita na mo nga ang quality isa git siya kakuan. Saka importante ka dili ni mga baligya ang kape sa sakto po ng presyo. Na magtudlo ni sa ila. Hinugtanan ang kuwa ah. Sa nursery, itutuan niya sa ala. Kapag siblings niya sa ito, mga panahumatagin siya sa tumbunga, hanto dito sa post-harvest beard niya mo. So, sa pagkakaroon, uh, ang among partners, kung ano siya, kaya niya sa ECDI Boca, sa Field Cafe ng Project. Dahil dito po sa farmer nga level, na-train po niyo kung saan pa tanong maging sakto. So, kami po niya mga mentor, natulog po niya dito sa mga farmer. Uh, diri sa mo asa ah, pagkape ah, kasagara gyud ang um, kuan mag-asawa man gyud siya or tibok pamilya so wala siya ga matter kung babae ba siya or lalaki kay nagtinabanga man sila so si kasagara ang bana mo ay magkanang mabug-at ang asawa dayo siya sa mga puti nga trabaho pero Nagya po yung mga babae niya. Kaya sa niya ang mga bukas. Wala siya eh. Kaya hindi pili kung saan man galing niya ang gender. Pero ang babae, wala po siya gilimitahan kung ang sa iyo. Kung kaya sa lalaki, kaya po siya sa babae. So, isip o sa kalumilihok niya diri sa tribo, ang ako yung gikuan niya ka ng mga time niya. Kung feeling na ako daw na gitkay ko, is ang ka ng kalipay nga kong ikakad sa tao. So, nagbati is to me. So, pagkita na mo nga, kaya na mo nga, makilhan ang talaan ni Clive nga. Makaproduce ni Uwa ang mga kapi, pero panganday na mo nga makasustain me. Mas daghan na iyang matabahan ng mga pamilya. O, isa na po siya ka, ka na, mga kapi nga makahatag ito ng mga quality nga mailan din siya dili lang sa Pilipinas yun dili sa Pilipinas kalibutan nga so ang ako lang yung ikashare isip ko sa food kababae nga natagaan o kahigayunan nga mahimong magmanage so dako kaya akong kalipay anak kay kanang dili giday siya basihan ng kung lalaki baka o babae kay kanang dili na ito limitahan ang atang pagaling mo nga Ani, lisod na na, dili ni mo nakaya. Makaya, dili mo ang tanan ko na ay pagpinabangay. Pero, at the end of the day, ang makapalipay sa tao, ang inyong pagtabang. Sinisip ka ayun mo. Natuduan ako siya. Wala siya ang isaktungan. Kanang, unsig na ibaw, na-share niya na, apply siya ang kinabuhi at ang bagoy na kinabuhi. Ano siya ang pinaka-importante din sa isang tao. Yan, no? So, thank you, no? Again, our salute sa ating mga ano, women farmers, no? So, women play very important role, especially sa coffee, no? Uh, knowing that women are very, very meticulous, especially in the process no? uh, to come up with quality. So, uh, the good uh, example uh, for that is Marivik, no? has been like the reigning queen ng Philippine coffee because of the quality of the coffee that she produced. Okay, so, yeah, I think uh, si Mila Litra, si Dato Rio, hindi nakabalik because of the poor signal sa kanilang location. So, I think we can now move forward uh, with the open forum. No, But again, we'd like to give you a recap. Earlier, uh, we had a presentation about the Field Cafe Project. Again, Field Cafe Project stands for Philippine Coffee Advancement and Farm 
Enterprise Project. So this is a project implemented by ACD Evoca. So ACD Evoca is an international NGO and we're based in Washington, USA. And uh, this project is funded by United States Department of Agriculture. So our main office for this project is in here in Davao City. I'm from Davao City. Uh, my colleague Hilda is in Sorigao right now. And uh, by the way, we're also joined by our uh, colleague, Melissa Alado, who is our access to finance uh, specialist. So if you want to learn more, more about agricultural financing, no, maybe Melissa can share late, uh, uh, with you later. No? So again, feel free to ask questions no? so, so that uh, you know, we can maximize uh, Melissa's presence also. No? So after our presentation, Safil Cafe Kanina, Marvik also shared uh, with us no, their transformation no, from uh, just a mere association that produce uh, commercial grade coffee and receives a uh, price, of course, for uh, their commercial produce, which is around 70 to 80 pesos per kilo to now um, earning uh, really good money from uh, selling coffee uh, with a price of uh, 300 pesos. And I think the highest that they've experienced is 800 pesos per kilo. Okay, so, <coughs> and of course, uh, again, as Marvik mentioned earlier, their, <coughs> sorry, their best line of defense is quality. Again, that's very important in the coffee business now. So, being very, very deliberate in the way you do things now so that you're able to produce quality. You know? And of course, Sheena, our partner from Magsigi Cooperative, uh, they are, uh, she shared with us their joy journey, how they got into the coffee business, you know? how they were able to uh, appreciate the income earning potential of coffee and how they're making millions now in their uh, plant material business since they're one of those that really produce best <coughs> quality coffee seedlings. Okay, and of course, we have that video uh, from uh, Mila Litra celebrating, of course, the contribution, especially of women entrepreneurs in the development of agriculture, especially in the coffee industry. Okay, so um, I think we cannot uh, entertain questions. So I'd like to turn you over to our facilitator from ISAFE. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sir Manny, and of course to our um, co-presenters earlier. So now let's go to our open forum. So I think some of the questions from our um, viewers were already answered earlier, but we also have questions from the people here in the studio and also questions that are sent personally. Na, med, uh, medyo silang mag -comment. So they sent their questions na lang through PM. So anyway, uh, Sir, let's go to our first question. So for this one, I think uh, representatives from Phil Cafe can, um, will be the one to answer this. So as uh, earlier, we've already talked about the different success stories of the Phil Cafe project. But um, also, I think through the years of uh, working with our far with our coffee farmers, there were there may be uh, some bumps and challenges that were encountered. So the question here, sir, is um, what were the problems encountered by the Phil Cafe project, and are there any far farmer organizations that failed to sustain the project? And if so, what uh, what are the reasons why they have failed to do so? Sige. Thank you very much. No. Maybe Melissa can <laughs> help me answer that question. Yes, uh, we really have encountered uh, challenges no, in the implementation uh, of the project. And uh, uh, the question was, were there uh, uh, you know, partner organizations that failed? Well, yeah, there were farmer organizations uh, that failed. No? Uh, number one, uh, I, I think uh, since... Uh, we as an organization, uh, really our approach is business. No? So we're looking at our producer, producer organization to also operate the business in the business-like fashion. No? So without which, no, if you don't have people in the organization who are very, very, in terms of their mind, mindset, entrepreneurial, no, that's, you know, uh, 
you know they they're they're doomed to fail <laughs> so yeah it's very important that uh, you know uh running an organization whether it's an a cooperative or an association they should understand that first of all it's a business no? hindi lang yan siya socialization no so you're there to do business you're there to make money no you should have a very very good justification especially for farmers why will they join you no they're not just joining you for a cause they're joining you because that is their livelihood no and if they cannot make good money out of that then what's the point of coming together no so that's very important you have to understand and uh, key, to, key to that is really you know uh be, being very very clear uh what is your vision you're able to articulate your mission but you're very very you know very um clear uh very strategic in terms of developing your goals and objectives because sometimes people or organizations do a lot of strategic planning strategic planning here strategic planning there business planning here business planning there and then what's the end the end point is that the document ends up on their shelves nasa shelf lang yan yung strategic plan and business plan they don't necessarily follow what's there in their work plan no so that, that it's very important that you know uh, you're doing this business planning and strategic planning exercise not for compliance but you know the value of that no and our uh, producer organization and access to finance specialist can very well share with us our experience since si Melissa Alado siya yung nakatutok no yan so Melissa uh, please uh, yeah share your experience yes so magandang hapon po sa lahat Actually, marami nang nasabi si Manny. I would just like to add, uh, yung pinaka-constraint talaga uh, on the farmer and on the producer organization side sa tingin ko, if tingin din namin is, ina-address kasi natin yung behavior. Um, so, it really takes a lot of time to change behavior, especially uh, in terms of the farmer's adoption of what the technology that we are imparting to them. Um, of course, uh, on the individual point of view and on the organizational point of view. So, um, sa organization naman, you are dealing with a lot of individuals. Iba-iba yung kinagisnan, iba-iba yung orientations. And the key there is really um, to to make it clear to them the benefits if they will adopt this and ano yung mga benefits. So, pinaka-clear naman dito yung ating market. Um, like for example, sa sinabi ni Marivic kanina, takot silang mutang on the entrepreneurial mindset. Baka makukulong sila or whatever. So, um, yun, ang approach lang talaga is have let them realize themselves. Uh, let them say na, ah, ganito pala yung gagawin dapat namin. So, we are not really dictating, we are facilitating change. Yun, yung pinaka-constraint is behavior change, both for individuals and for the organization. At saka tama talaga si Manny, merong mga hindi nagsusustain talaga. Those who refuse to take up the challenge to change. Yun lang yun. Thank you. <laughs> you thank you so much thank you so much Ma melissa and sir manny so i think this question our next question is somewhat related to the to the first one and then and then related lang siya sa sabi nga ni Ma melissa na um the one of the challenges really is behavioral so behavior ng mga farmers natin so mr miguel ralionza is asking alam po natin na mahirap baguhin ang mga nakagisnan at nakasanayan nating mga bagay Anong mga hakbang po ang nakatulong o hindi nakatulong para maging mas bukas ang mga farmers sa mga bagong kaalaman? Sige. Ah, okay, First, go, go ahead, siguro. Mel. Manny, ikaw muna. <laughs> ah, okay, sige, sige. So, uh, uh, the, the, you know, uh, the learning approach we do in the academy with younger generation is different than we do with adults. No? So, 
we follow the adult learning principle now and with you know uh with adults it's it's very experiential no so common sa kanila yan yung to see is to believe no that's why uh things like demonstration farms play very important role no uh, as uh, in in doing this activity no because uh if they cannot see it sometimes you know they won't believe you or if you're not going to bring you, you if you're not going to bring them to places like the demo farms or you bring them to successful organization that has been there and done that no uh, it's very hard for them to 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 really change no and of course uh, since uh, motivation natin dito hindi lang siya ano eh, tulungan but it's really what goes into your pocket it's money no if you can demonstrate to them and make them talk to the buyer that this is how much you can potentially earn if you improve your quality no that's what we did with Marivik no? so maybe after this Marivik can share with you how did were they able to adopt it kasi we oh, it's not only Bacopa that we're working with we also work with other organizations. But what set apart Bacopa, bakit sila nagiging advanced, it's because of their willingness to adapt, to follow. No? So what we did, we brought them to training. We told them that what you've learned right now, uh, we can add more to that. Uh, we can add more value to what you've learned already because you're very, very good in production. But I think the missing link is on the processing you can actually improve your coffee and make it, you know, taste like this. No, these are the potential flavor notes. But it should not be us who will explain it to them. Otherwise, they think, ah, wala magani mo kapihan, or di magani ka mo palit ng kape. But if you let them talk to a buyer, if you let them talk to a barista, if you let them talk to a curator, then that's different. That's why. Normally, we don't get into the picture. We just facilitate as much as possible. It should not be us who will be talking to the farmers. It's our partners. Yeah. I see. So, um, yes, uh, can any other who would like to add? Uh, Ma Ma Mar Ma uh, oh, yes, Ms. Mar yes, Ms. Marivic, how about uh, your point of view rin naman po, uh, as, of course, uh, partner farmers, so. Saan mo nagtuko, saan mo, Abik? Paano saan mo na-convinced? During that time, nga, gipa-experience me ni, uh, during that time po, na pina-experience nyo kami on how to cup the coffee and how to identify what specialty coffee is, during the Q grading class, then Marielus and I only two in the in the class. So the rest are the buyers. There are ten buyers, and we are two so twelve. And then they ask, they ask us, "Kung meron na ba kami quality na kape?" So ayon na yun. Ang isa ding problema kasi sa sa farmer na side is yun yung sinabi ni Sir na um to see is to believe. So uh, kami na nanatrain na ng Isiday Boca on, on how to produce quality coffee. So kami yung naging model modilan sa farmer. At saka kami din yung unang nakatikim sa price na mas mas mahal na price. So yun, hindi na kami huminto na kailangan naming magpursigi sa, sa quality ng coffee para um, mapataas pa din namin ang quality hanggang sa sumali kami sa competition para magkaroon ng pangalan yung, ano namin, yung grupo namin as Bacofa po. Yun. Naging model modilan mo na si si farm eh, yung naunang train nauna na na training ng 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 Isiday Boca po. Okay. Thank you so much Ama Marivic and uh oh nga, um there as what they've mentioned earlier it's really emphasized that most of our farmers are really uh they need to see to believe it. So oh nga kaya nagmodel model talaga si Ma Marivic. So anyway um ma'am uh, or I mean, Sir Manny, someone is asking then po, um, I think uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Ma'am Claire Salgado Cardona is asking, where daw pwedeng makabili ng mga seedlings sa kape? Uh, uh, I'd like to know his location. 
kasi if it's around uh, Bukidnon Province or Misamis Oriental, then we have uh, Milalitra, which is in Lantapan. We also have Mel. Uh, what's the name of the uh, chorus group? We have, so in we have Dalsa. Dalsa in Dalwangan. We have Dalsa in Dalwangan. And I think we're also working with few farmer organizations in uh, Misamis Oriental. So uh, we can provide you with the list. Uh, we can provide it to ISAFE. <laughs> Uh, and then ISAFE can give the list to you so that you get access to this. Okay. Oh, the location is in Agusan del Norte. That's good um, because we're actually working with the Agusan or the Caraga Coffee Council. So we have nurseries located in what's uh, the name of that cooperative mill in Surigao del Sur? MKGC in... Yeah. Tagbina. Uh, can you turn on your camera, Mel? Para oh, kayo. sorry, sorry. Hindi <laughs> pa nakaturn on. <laughs> sorry. So, in Tagbina. 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 Surigao del Sur. Tagbina. Uh, can you turn on your camera, Mel? Yan. Yeah, no. Hilda is here. By the way, Hilda, uh, can you turn on your camera so that they can see you? She is also from Surigao. So, yeah. Uh, uh, Hilda course, is one of... Ano, uh, of course, from Magsige also. Yes, of course, we have Magsige if you're uh, from the Bao region. So, yan. Uh, your, yes, man, we have a nursery in Pagbina. Man, we have a nursery in Pagbina. And also in Luzon, man, we have um, in Atempo. Uh, yes, man, we have a nursery in Pagbina. Yeah, so our uh, producer organizations that we've assisted to uh, produce quality planting material, they spread all over Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. So since our audience yeah, are also spread all throughout the country, then yeah, we can provide you with information where you can get quality planting materials. Okay, so uh, you'll just give us the list, po, no? So for our viewers, sure. uh, yes. Uh, so that we will also email it to you. So um, again, don't forget, pala, to click the link, the pin, uh, the pin comment in this live, and then register for the attendance, so that um, we can provide you a copy of the list of the um, different cooperatives and organizations that you can get your coffee seedlings from and also for your certificates. So, email na lang lamin yan lahat sa inyo. Uh, now, uh, let's proceed to our next question. So, sir, speaking of organizations, so what are, um, somebody is asking po, what are the qualifications of the organizations na pwedeng makipartner with Phil Cafe? And if you are still uh, looking for organizations that you can partner with? Uh, maybe our technical director, Hilda. <laughs> yes, Bob uh, Are Hilda. we still open to work with uh, producer organizations? Uh, those who are interested to work with the project or uh, maybe Melissa. Yeah, since uh, Melissa is our producer organization and access to finance as specialist. Uh, yes, Hilds. Those who are interested to work with the project. Yeah, we are or, only. Uh, yeah. Maybe Melissa. Yeah, since uh, Melissa is our producer organization and access to finance as specialist. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, man, we are already in our third year no, of yeah, the project uh, and um, uh, yes. Since, uh, our are we still open? <laughs> and also, man, um, we have already identified our partner issues and private um, universities, no? our partners, but then we are with other, with, uh, we have um, call no for innovation, innovation uh, fund, innovating the Philippine coffee sector. So maybe we can still, uh, after assessing those man, those uh, katong mga proposals. So maybe we will have another call for uh, for innovation, yeah, innovating coffee sector for this pro uh, project proposals from. Other issues since some of the issues also joined 
the World Coffee Research uh, Workshop on how to how to develop a research proposal. So yeah, we will uh, look on that, that. We'll discuss with that with the uh, USDA and uh, of course our Chico Party. So yeah. but we, we will yeah, yeah. let you know. So, yeah, yeah. So again, uh, anyway, from time to location, time. Jan man, yung nag I'm not potential. sure. Uh, uh, I think it's in northern Mindanao po. Ah, okay. Man? Okay lang yan. Baka training, tra training. So, since while we have identified specific number of organizations that we can potentially work with, but that does not uh, stop us also from, you know, providing from time to time visits and then like uh, one-time training on post-harvest or one-time training on uh, talking about the income earning potential on coffee and again we are also working na uh, with with the DTI rapid no DTI rapid has a big project uh, which includes coffee also especially if it's in northern Mindanao then we have that we have DTI rapid we have DA no so yeah uh, just feel free to approach any of these partners and ask them we can talk <laughs> uh, maybe on specific activities only Okay, and, and sir, by the way, um, some of our viewers are requesting if you can show or flash again this slide containing your um, contact details because, yes, they're asking for the contact details of a Phil Cafe project. Ah, okay. Let me check. Sige. I think it's on the last slide now of my presentation. Okay. Sige. So I'll, I'll just flash it here. Uh, on uh, our screen, this one. Okay, yeah. So okay. that's uh, our contact details. Screenshot in the lang. And in addition, man, in addition to that, we have like, for example, in Tagbina University, we they they are new and they partner they are willing to partner with us in establishing a coffee uh, demo farm so i think we start, we are still open with that okay thank you so right. much on certain activities uh, yes po yeah uh -uh. okay mm -mm. Okay, thank you so much for that, Mom Hilda and Sir Manny. Now for our, I think this would be the last question. Our last question po, um, is about the uh, inclusive market systems approach. So you have presented earlier about the uh, inclusive market systems approach that you've used for the Phil Cafe project. Now, sir, um, have you you or have you used the same approach to other crops or and if not, can this be used or can this approach be used to other crops? Yes, uh, it can be used uh, on different industries uh, since uh, the basic uh, principles are, are uh, more or less the same. And well, uh, we are implementing project in several countries worldwide and uh, even other organizations uh, who are in the development sector are already adapting the market systems approach to uh, development mainly because uh, of its very, very big potential in terms of uh, creating sustainability. You know? Because uh, sometimes the reason why a project fails, it's because uh, it becomes too dependent on the implementer. You know? So when the project ends and the implementer is no longer there, then everything ends. You know? So what is good with uh, the market uh, systems uh, development approach is that uh, the implementer only act as facilitator while at the same time developing the capacity of existing or the organic players who are inside the industry who will not at any time leave that industry. Now, so that, that's a good thing and that's what we're doing. And this is very, very applicable to other industries as well. I see. Thank you so much, Sir Manny, for that. Um, and, I, and also... Um, uh, if I may add. I suppose, if I may add. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there are a lot of resources online and on YouTube. You can just search market systems approach to development. You can go to the BIM or the SIP network and even ACDA Evoca websites. There are a lot of resources if you want to learn more about the market systems approach. 
Yes, that's right. So I think, uh, especially now that we're in the digital age, there are a lot of resources that we can uh, utilize for that. So, and I think this kind of approach is really helpful, not only to uh, extension workers, but also to students and even um, in the academe for teaching then. So yes, I hope that everyone would also get to check out uh, those resources that Sir Manny have mentioned. So now, um, I'm so sorry, I, there is still a lot of people who are asking questions and commenting. However, um, we are um, running a bit late, so we are running, running out of time. So for those yeah. whose questions were not in, um, mentioned, for this webinar, again, we've um, Sir Manuel already flashed their contact details, so you can email and, them uh, directly. I po, yeah. Yes, po? Yeah, uh, they can also visit the Philippine Coffee Expo page. Because mm. I've read here some comments from Miagao Farmers. Yes, po, uh, I think they're from Iloilo. Yeah, mm. you can go to the Philippine Coffee Expo page, then we can read your messages there. Uh, especially since they also are interested to like work with our So that's Philippine Coffee Expo po yung ititype na yeah. sa Facebook. Okay. Thank so you. yes. Apa. Okay po. Yes. Yeah. So again, check out the Philippine Expo Coffee uh, Philippine, Philippine Coffee Expo, Expo. Uh, Expo page so that you can also uh, message them. So also for those na um, medyo shy, you can also uh, message Ateneo Agis. We will forward then your queries or your questions, of course, to Phil Cafe Project. So now before we end our webinar, of course, we'd like to give or to ask for a clo closing message from the Phil Cafe project. So I think Mom Melissa will be the one to give our closing message. So Mom Melissa, take it away po. Yes, so in behalf of ACDI VOCA Phil Cafe project, uh, we would like to thank you, Xavier University College of Agriculture, I say, for for hosting or facilitating this activity. Um, and also to, to our virtual audience for showing interest in coffee. And um, with that, you are also helping bolster the different market system actors in the coffee value chain. So since um, it was stressed earlier by Mani and by Hilda that we are really working with universities because we see uh, the state universities and colleges and even private universities, uh, they have the potential to sustainably deliver coffee education to the current and next generation of coffee farmers and farmer entrepreneurs. So even beyond the life of Phil Cafe Project. So thank you very much. And